Hi everyone and welcome to Practice A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estre. In this video I'm going to be going through the exam technique critical analysis. So we'll have a look at some ways that you can lay out the questions to try and better address the question to get full marks as well as some typical types of questions that you get. So the critical analysis exam technique, in particular, it's on paper three and you'll have at least 15 marks of critical analysis questions. You do get some critical analysis in the other papers as well, uh, but the main focus is in paper three. So what we mean by this then is when you get these questions um, like these two here. So it always starts with some information, normally unknown, but linked to one of the theory topics. And it tells you what the scientists are investigating. It gives you a bit of information about their method, and then it gives you their results. And we can see that over here as well. So the scientists are investigating the effect of caffeine on heart rate in human volunteers. We then have a bit about the method and the results. So that's how the critical analysis questions always start what's been investigated, method and results. And the types of questions that come up with this could be using the information to suggest reasons why, and that could be using um, the information in terms of the method to suggest why they used a particular um, control group or why they used a particular piece of equipment. Or it could be suggesting reasons why for the results, which also links to this point here, explain the results. You often get questions linked to the control experiment as well, which would be when you have an additional group set up who aren't being given, if it's, for example, over here, caffeine, they're not being given the active ingredient, which is caffeine. So you're then just looking at the results to see or to compare the effect of the independent variable. And the final type of question, which actually I've got some other alternatives. We've got use the information to evaluate the conclusion, but that could also be phrased in these other ways as well. So do you agree with the conclusion? What can you conclude from the data? And do you trust the conclusion? So those four are essentially the same question, just phrased differently. And this is the big one that we're gonna focus on because you nearly always get asked one of these four linked to a critical analysis question. So the way that I always start introducing this in school is with this mind map. So I take out, I lift off the data and the information from the question, and I put it into this mind map where we have the first box is, box is describe, the second box is conclude, and the third is evaluate, which is where you're coming up with how confident you are in your conclusion. And I deliberately do this to get students to think about what elements they need to be looking for when they read the information and when they look at the data. Because when you get these critical analysis questions, that is the first step. You need to be reading through the information with purpose. So by that, I mean underlining the key points which you think could link to and evaluate, so a pro or a con with the method. Um, really focusing on what the scientists are investigating because that will link to your conclusion. And then the description is for the data. So highlighting or annotating what the key patterns are. So you could do this as a practice with paper three AQA questions with these critical analysis questions, just focusing on picking out the description, conclusion and evaluation. And when you do that, it will be quite slow. It might take you 20 minutes before you even get onto the question. But the whole point is, this is an exam technique you have to practice. And it will be slow at the start, but the more you practice it in this way, it will become second nature to you that when you read the information, you'll know to pick out the description, think of a conclusion, pros and cons. And then when you actually do it in exam conditions without this mind map, you'll be much quicker and you'll start to spot exactly the um, patterns that you need for your answers. So I'm going to go through this worked example here, but instead of having it as a mind map, I'm actually going to do it this way around, which you might prefer, um, just having it as sections to pull out the information. So the information we have is, scientists investigated whether there was a change in the communities of three different habitats between 2019 and 2020. 
So the conclusion straight away, that's going to link to what they're investigating. So we're going to have to conclude once we've examined the data, whether there was or was not a change in the communities. So conclusions are always very short. Describe, so we'll then have to look at all of this data and pick out what are the key patterns, trends, results. It's basically you're stating the obvious. What are the key patterns? Once we've then picked those out, I'm going to jot down what I think the conclusion is. And then the last thing we do before we even get on to the question is picking out from your descriptions which of those are providing evidence to support the conclusion you've written and which of those descriptions do not provide supporting evidence for your conclusion. So I'm going to go through what I mean exactly by those three boxes. So first of all, I'm going to pick out my descriptions and I've highlighted as I've gone. So the first thing is the obvious patterns I can see are that the mean species richness increased in habitats B and C, but it decreased in A. That's what the positive and negative symbol mean. So that's my first description that I can see from the results. The other column though is to do with the p-value and the p-value tells you the probability that this change is due to chance. So the p-value is something that they would have got after doing a statistic. And in this case, it would have been the student t-test. So what I can then describe from these are that the change in the mean species richness for habitats A and B is significant. And that's because there is less than 5% probability. And in this case, there's less than 1% probability that those two changes are due to chance. And therefore it is a significant change. So that leaves my final description. For habitat C, the mean change in species richness is not significant. And we know that because we have more than 5% probability the difference is due to chance. And if it's over 5%, it is not significant. So from that then, I need to look back at what they're investigating to come up with a very brief conclusion. So I'm thinking here, we've got the scientists investigated whether there was a change in the communities. Now, there was a change that was significant in two out of the three habitats. So that's what I'm going to conclude at this stage, that there was a significant change in A and B, but not C. And then the last bit to pick apart before we get to the exam question is to then evaluate this. So which of your descriptions support the conclusion? Which of the descriptions um, do not support the conclusion that there was a change in the communities? So I've colour coded this. So in red, those are my pieces of information which do not support the conclusion that there was a change in the communities. And in blue are my um, pieces of evidence that do support the conclusion that there was a change in the habitats. And you can see each time I have used all of that information, I've said whether it's um, a decrease or an increase in the species richness, and I've actually quoted exactly what the p-value means. So less than 5% probability is due to chance or 1%, and this one's 5% again. So that is what I'd be doing when I was practicing critical analysis questions, really taking the time to analyze the information whether that's the method or the um, results in detail, and split it into describing the data, coming up with a conclusion, and then evaluate your conclusion based on the data. And as I said, that will probably take you about 20 minutes each time, but that's the whole point. It's practice to improve on this exam technique. Now, the actual exam question linked to this is, the scientists concluded that the communities did change. Using only the data in the table, evaluate this conclusion. And now, because I've already done all of this, I can just lift this information from the evaluate box, and that would be my three marks straight away. So that's one of the advantages. It then makes answering the questions a lot quicker because you've already done the legwork at the beginning. It also means you've got a better understanding of the method, what they were trying to find out and what the results show. So you're more likely to give an accurate answer and a better understood answer and therefore your clarity would have improved. 
So that is it for critical analysis. Give it a go with that template and I hope you find that it does work.